So what about the multiplication of fractions? So if you want to multiply two fractions, the product of the fraction a b by c d is going to be the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. So for example, if we want to multiply 3 fifths by 12 sevenths, paper is cheap, so let's write down our steps. The product of these two fractions, we will have the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. And we'll multiply those factors together. Now a common thing we'll have to do is to multiply a whole number by a fraction. So let's multiply 15 by 7 ninths. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and reduce to lowest terms. So we can multiply two fractions together, but what about a fraction and a whole number? And so for this, we'll want to remember that for any number n, n is the same as n once. So equals means replaceable, so I can replace 15 with 15 once. So now I have two fractions, so I can multiply them together. And multiplying them out, 15 by 7 is 105, 1 by 9 is 9. But I do want to reduce. So the thing to remember here is that a divisor is only relevant if it's a common divisor. And since we only care about common divisors, we'll factor the easier number. 9 is 3 times 3. If 3 is not a factor of 105, it doesn't matter what other factors it has. None will be in common with a factor of 9. So either 105 is 3 times something, or it doesn't matter how 105 factors. So let's try it out. And we see that 105 is 3 times 35. So equals means replaceable. And we'll remove that common factor to get our final answer. 35 thirds. Now, because we're going to try and remove common factors anyway, it might be more efficient to look for common factors before we multiply. So let's go through that same process. 15 times 7 ninths. Well, we'll set it up the same way. But this time, we won't multiply out 15 by 7 or 1 by 9. Instead, we'll think about trying to remove common factors before we multiply things out. So again, 9 is 3 times 3. And unless 3 is a factor of 7 nope. or 15, we don't care what other factors these numbers have. And we find that 3 is a factor of 15. We'll remove those common factors. And now we have a simpler multiplication, 5 by 7 over 1 times 3. So multiplying those numbers out gives us our final answer. This idea of removing common factors before you multiply is very useful once we look at larger products. For example, 5 twelfths by 16 25ths by 9. Again, any whole number n is n once, so 9 is 9 once. We'll set up the multiplication of the numerators and the denominators, but we won't multiply them. Instead, we'll look for common factors. 16 is 4 times 4, 9 is 3 times 3. So our goal is to find factors of 3, 4, or 5 in the denominators. Well, 12 is 3 times 4, and 25 is 5 times 5. So we can remove our common factors. And finally, we do have some multiplications remaining. So we get our final answer, 12 fifths. One particularly important product is 27 53rds times 53. So let's set that up. 27 53rds times 53. Well, 53 is the same as 53 once. We'll set up our product, but we won't multiply it out. And now we'll try to remove some common factors. 
Now the first thing to recognize here is that we have a common factor already. 53 is in both numerator and denominator, so we can remove it and get our much simpler fraction, 27 once, which reduces to 27. And the thing that's worth noting here is we multiplied this fraction by its denominator and got just the numerator. And this suggests that in general, for any fraction, a over b times b is going to give us a. In other words, if we multiply a fraction by its denominator, we'll get the numerator by itself.